this is really shocking information. You were, your thesis is that uh, the U.S. government and extending actually outside of government, government, corporations, higher education is compromised by the Chinese communists. This is a pretty serious accusation to make. Yeah, Liz, it's it's predicated on what Beijing's strategy is. They're explicit about it. They debate it and discuss it in China among the CCP leadership. Uh, it's called elite capture. And the idea is pretty brilliant if you want to give them credit for it. Uh, they view themselves in competition with the United States. Some even believe they're already at war with the United States. And rather than going head to head with this very dynamic economy, uh, this you know powerful cultural force in the world, the United States, or of course the world's best military, rather than going head to head, they're going to basically decapitate the United States by buying off portions of our leadership. They do it in Washington, D.C., Wall Street, Silicon Valley, and elsewhere, and they've been very successful at it, and that's essentially what they've been doing, and uh, we need to start paying attention before we lose this competition. So this idea of elite capture, it is it is bribery or buying someone's soul is maybe a better way to put this. Um, let's not be hypothetical about this. In government, give us some examples um, of people, of politicians who've been bought off by the Chinese and how that's impacted well, how they govern us. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can look at people of both political parties to the highest levels of power, uh, begin with the first family, the Biden family. Uh, as we point out, uh, and it's all sourced and footnoted in the back of the book, the Biden family's received some $31 million in deals uh, from China. Uh, these deals were arranged by four Chinese businessmen who we name. Each and every one of them has ties to the highest levels of Chinese intelligence. So this is clearly an elite capture technique. Uh, if you move to Congress, you can look at the Republican leader in the Senate, which would be Mitch McConnell. He and his wife, Elaine Chao, who, of course, was the transportation secretary in the Trump administration, uh, are joined at the hip with Chinese state-owned companies and the Chinese government with the uh, shipping business that the Chao family owns. Uh, the Chinese government builds all their ships for them, finances the construction of all of them to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars, provides all the crews and uh, provides a lot of contracts for them to make money. Uh, you can look at the Speaker of the House, that would be Nancy Pelosi. Uh, she used to be critical of China, she is far less so now. And part of the reason is that both of her husband and her son have secured deals in Beijing. And it's important to point out, Liz, that what China's looking for is they're not looking for robotic responses from these individuals. Uh, they categorize it, if you loosely translate it to English, as they're looking for big help with a little bad mouth. They recognize that Joe Biden or Mitch McConnell may criticize them for the work and, and the repression that they're doing on the Uyghurs. Uh, but as long as they're helping them on the big things, which is access to our capital, access to our technology, they don't mind if there's a little bit of bad mouth. And that's what I would argue is what all of these political leaders are providing for them. 